Si Mike yang berikan jangan tiba. Oh Mike. We can start now. Uh, our friends in media, we are with this afternoon the uh, leaders of uh, the major political parties. On my right is uh, Congressman East Barbers of NP. Of course, our chairman of the Constitutional Amendment, Congressman Rufus. My left is uh, Deputy Speaker J.J. Uh, Suarez. On my left also uh, Congressman uh, uh, Duavit of NPC. And of course, NUP Congressman Abed Garcia, and I saw uh, Congressman Martin Berga. So I think we can start while waiting for, for our majority leader. So, Major. How are you? Nito ka? Build the chair. Nito ka na, Jay. Kong JJ, kami ni pare. Kong JJ, hilan lang tayong chair. So okay, can we start the ball rolling na? Si Ryan, si Ryan na yan. Ay ay ano kay? Start na. So the we just had an all member focus because we, some members would like uh, us to gather because of the recent developments and the developments uh, from the Senate, statements were issued wherein some or some or a lot of House members would want to also express and get the sentiments of other House members. So uh, there was a proposal uh, to come up with a house resolution uh, from uh, this August chamber, the House of Representatives. The house resolution will, file, will be filed on Monday. Monday. Maybe I, I will just wait for it to be filed on Monday to be official, yeah. So to give you an idea for the resolution, a resolution expressing unwavering solidarity. On Monday. I think on Monday. Okay, thank you. Okay, a uh, resolution expressing unwavering solidarity and support to the leadership of the Honorable Speaker Ferdinand Martin Gomez from Wallace and the upholding the integrity and honor of the House of Representatives in the face of intense assault from the Senate in violation of the principle of the interparliamentary courtesy and undue interference in the performance of its legislative and constituent functions. So that is the uh, title of the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Well, we welcome that development because that is what we agreed and have been waiting for uh, since the start of this year. They filed resolution of both houses number six, 
Uh, and in fact, if we backtrack that resolution of both houses number six filed by the Senate President, the Senate President, Mig Subiri, even gave it that a timeline that they will pass it this March. So the House, we, will, we are patient enough in waiting for them to pass it, pass it this March. So maghihintay po ang House. So we welcome, we would like to thank our counterparts in the Senate for finally sitting down as what we were requesting. Let's bring it up to a higher level of uh, discussion, particularly which is the meat of the matter, the economic amendments that has to be made to help this country, the economic amendments to update that 37-year-old constitution. So, maghihintay po kami. Nagsabi naman po ang Senate President na gagawin nila to, ipapasa nila by March. So, the House of Representatives will have that patience in waiting for them to transmit it to us before our uh, Holy Week break. Maghihintay po kami. Firstly, as we have stated in the previous uh, press conference, uh, this will be the game changer. If they approve uh, the economic uh, amendments to the Constitution, then there will be no more basis for the people's initiative. Our, our uh, RBA 6 here uh, really is only economic amendments, no, no abolition of the Senate. They are reacting, overreacting on something that is not there. And so, therefore, we uh, support uh, the Senate President and the, the Senators, hope, hopefully, that they are going to, uh, to approve this before the Holy Week. We just have some requests to include, no, to have a final, a total, comprehensive opening of our economy. They only have three. They have uh, public utility, they have uh, education, and advertising. We would like to have, especially, the constitutional provision on the development exploitation of natural resources. Jerry Seacott, the, uh, the economist, has come out this morning that in fisheries itself, uh, we cannot bring in uh, big uh, investors on fishing, and we are a archipelagic country uh, that needs foreign investments. And uh, the NEDA chief has said, uh, Mr. Balisakan, that we should open already. So our appeal to them, why also not consider uh, development of uh, exploitation of natural resources and then uh, media and others that we have uh, proposed. So, yeah, that's subject to, to uh, what we have. So, we are requesting a more comprehensive economic amendments, nothing on political amendments. Thank you. Uh, uh, sorry. Nadagdag ko lang kasi this is a welcome development no at uh, uh, tayo po ay nasisiyan dahil uh, at last no uh, may schedule na uh, madidinig na itong uh, RBH6 but let me just uh, refresh the memory of everyone that for the last several days yung ating speaker po ay nagpahayag at sinuportahan po ito ng ating mga kasamaan sa kongreso na kami po ay willing to embrace the version that the Senate will pass. Dahil po sa Senate po manggagaling yung version ng economic uh, amendments sa ating Constitution, therefore, they will be assured that they will not take up any political provision for that matter. So, again, uh, let me reiterate that the Speaker, as the head of the 311 members of this House, has manifested his desire to uh, uh, embrace the, the version that the Senate will pass in this RBH. Yeah, hello, um, good afternoon. On our part po, actually masaya kami no, dito sa nangyayari na sa Senate na nag-schedule na sila na meron silang hearing. Um, like I said sa, uh, two days ago, um, in an ideal world nga, yung mga debate mangyayari sa official na kapasidad. And I think that is the beginning of that. Now, any start is, you know, just to start it is good. If it ends up in whichever mode that is uh, agreed upon by both houses, 
Um, ang sabi ko kanina sa meeting, ang view ko doon is, alam mo, minsan yung, um, yung debate mas importante sa resulta. Um, mapalitan man o ang konstitusyon o hindi, ang, ang maganda yung napag-usapan. No? So, that is our view. We already are on record as to what our views are towards this. Na, ma makikita nyo naman sa record natin yung mga pangalan namin, lahat na paninligan na, na rin namin. And we're looking forward to that happening also in the Senate. Mas kaya naman ang desisyon nila na, na nandun din naman ang mga pangalan nila at ang mga stand nila. You know, so, so yun. And uh, we, again, um, we, we respect them. Um, a lot of them were our colleagues. And uh, I think this is the start of a thing simmering down and you know getting back to work. So we welcome it very much. Thank you. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. First of all, sorry for us being late dahil uh, nag-meeting pa po yung party leaders with the speaker. Then afterwards, nag-meeting po yung uh, all-member uh, caucus na ginanap ngayong hapon. Kaya medyo na-late po kami. And in that meeting, of course, medyo maraming emotions, maraming napag-usapan. Uh, hindi naman natin maalis yun, uh, given the recent events that have happened. Pero ang pinaka-importante uh, takeaway from that uh, caucus is that number one, the House is uh, uh, solid behind the Speaker as was relayed by our uh, senior Deputy Speaker and Majority Floor Leader in the form of uh, the resolution that will be filed on Monday. So yun po yung una. Pangalawa, um, kahit na medyo nasasaktan yung ating speaker, uh, ang instructions niya po sa ating mga kasamahan dito sa uh, House of Representatives ay uh, wag nang palakihin yung issue. Tayo po ay uh, uh, magtrabaho na. Uh, nang sa ganon ay yung ating trabaho ay talagang pakinabangan ng ating mga maumayan. So yan po, uh, in so many words, ang instructions ng ating speaker and we're very happy na ditinggin na ng Senate ang RBH-6 para magawa na rin po namin ang aming counterpart dito sa House of Representatives at mapag-usapan na po ang pag-improve ng ating konstitusyon nang sa ganon ay uh, mabuksan ng ating ekonomiya for more investments, better jobs, and uh, better lives for our people. Yun lang po at maraming salamat. Um, uh, for, for, for that to happen, we'll have to have a total change of form of government to a parliamentary um, form of government. And, and that cannot even be done via constituent assembly. That can only be done um, by way of a constitutional convention of representatives ag elected by the people in a separate election. Hindi na kami yung gagawa nun. Um, it's very clear that this is not, ano, that, is, that this is not in the table. Um, to give a little bit of his history, um, yung RBH 6 na version ng House is in, does ask for a, um, for a convention. But the reason that uh, this version of the House is, was to ask for the conversion this term was because last term, um, if you recall, um, like I said, I, I personally faced you all on the same topic also, the offer naman of our former uh, Speaker Lord was a uh, constituent assembly, economic provisions only, voting separately, at hindi rin tinanggap. So, ang thinking this term was, um, okay, kung hindi nyo gusto yun, eh, subukan naman natin itong isa. So, kaya ganun yung version ng RBH6 um, ng House ngayon. So, with the latest developments naman, 
ang uh, sinasabi na nga is, eh kung ayaw ninyo rin ang RBH6 namin, eh de, yung RBH6 naman ninyo. Parang just to, parang maumpisahan na lang. Thank you. Okay. Can I say something? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. With relation to the question of uh, Tina, no? Yeah. I think um, what we see is the narrative against progress and development is consistent. So, gusto nilang lagyan ng political uh, color yung constitutional amendments that pinupush ng House of Representatives. When in fact, um, on the table are purely economic amendments. Uh, this was the same argument and threats uh, posed by the Senate na sinabi na i-abolish daw sila, matatanggal daw sila, tapos ito naman sinasabi na to perpetuate power, etc., etc. You know, it's really the same narrative being thrown uh, against the proposal to push for charter amendments. But, you know, like what uh, Jack has mentioned earlier and the, uh, the other colleagues have been uh, uh, parroting since, you know, we, we fought for this. You know, how long do we have to wait? We're in the same level as Cambodia already. We're eighth from the last. When do you want to actually realize the full potential of the country? So we're happy with the development of the Senate. We look forward to them having discussions quickly. Uh, let me emphasize quickly because um, Majo mentioned a, a timeline earlier, although I'm quite concerned because when I heard the um, statements of Senator Coco Pimentel, ang sinabi niya, parang kakailanganin ng mahigit isang taon to sa Senado uh, para pag-usapan. So, siguro yun ang kailangan natin malaman mula sa mga kaibigan natin sa Senado, yung timetable. Uh, ha? They gave. So, we'll hold them to that. March. Yeah. Regarding, uh, to add to that, yung sinabi kong timetable, hindi po kami nagbigay nun, ha? May records na nag-issue ng statement o yung Senate President at sinabi nila, Senate President uh, Mig Subiri, nagtatrabawin nila to at they will try to to have it for March para i-transmit po sa amin. So, sa kanilang timetable to, hindi po sa House of Representatives. In fact, this development is a welcome development for us. Kung matransmit nila sa amin ng March, nandito na sa amin yung bola, tatapusin namin para pwede na natin ipresenta sa taong bayan for a referendum. Pagbubutuhan na ng tao. Ngayon, yung mga ibang agam-agam na may people's initiative, hindi na po magagawa yon kasi isa lang po pwedeng initiative for every five years. Now, with regards to the the suspicion that we are trying to do this to have somebody become uh, a prime minister or something, records will prove, tingnan po natin ano yung transmit ng House of Representatives sa Senado. Hindi po yung sikreto that those are public records. Anong transmit ng House of Representatives sa Senado? Resolution of both Houses number 6, authored by 302 congressmen, Constitutional Convention to amend the economic provision. So wala pong, wala pong nilagay doon na political. So I do not know kung saan po galing yung political, e eh klarong-klaro po sa transmit ng House of Representatives that that is for economic provisions that we really feel that in each and every Congress, sa lahat ng speaker na dumaan dito sa House of Representatives, we're trying to push to update that 37-year-old Constitution. So, base, siguro balikan po natin, I'm challenging those who are accusing the House of Representatives of trying to put in this, you know, uh, pushing for this uh, constitutional amendments or changes in our constitution to review. Pakita nyo po yung dokumento 
na nagsasabi na we are pushing for those type of political changes, you present. We challenge them to go and check the records of the Senate of what we transmitted. Tama na po yung istorya-storya at kung ano-anong uh, kalokohan. Kaya nga, masaya kami ngayon upon learning that the Senate is now going to deliberate on it. Ang tagal na po natin iniintay yan. So tama na po yung mga kung ano-anong istorya. Let's stick to the facts of what we transmitted to the Senate and we welcome the development from the Senate telling everyone in this country that they are going to discuss their RBH number no. 6 proposing amendments to the constitutional uh, to the economic provisions of the constitution yes uh, majority leader can i ask uh, add more uh, to the question of uh, the, uh, the statement of president Duterte, former president Duterte, that uh, the pi will lead to uh, some people to become prime minister and there will be some, it will be a perpetuation of power. That has no constitutional and legal basis. Constitutional. People's initiative cannot change the form of government or the system of government. We are unitary. We cannot change it to federal through people's initiative because revision na yan eh. We cannot also change a, uh, a uh, bicameral form of government. Since the use of form ito, a bicameral form government into a unicameral form because the PI will only be for amendments. Now, we therefore can see that there is no basis in that and also on the law on people's initiative, clearly amendments long. So it can never happen to this PI that there can be a change to parliamentary to elections for prime minister. And so therefore, that is very clear. It has no legal and constitutional basis to say that this is for PI, is for uh, perpetuation of power or election of prime minister. So that is very clear. Thank you. I guess, nasa akin yung mikrofono. Um, I think uh, si Mayor Basta already gave a statement. Uh, Nag-statement na siya, nakita ko sa front page kanina. Um, I res irerespetuhin na lang yung statement niya. No? Um, hindi na para hindi pa, pa tayo maglagay ng gasolina, di ba? Sa, ano, may statement na po siya eh. So, we'll, ano, ako personally, I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Well, uh, I think na supersede na yung uh, sinabi ni Mayor Baste dun sa statement niya na binanggit nga ni Kong Jack. So, I guess uh, kung na supersede na, uh, yun na yun siguro. At uh, tama, uh, instructions nga ni Speaker, huwag nang palakihin ng anggulo para makapagtrabaho na tayo pare-pareho at uh, maging united tayo for the progress of the country. Kaya let's leave it at that. Uh, ganun din sa katulad ng sinabi ni Kong Jack. Um, I think I've answered that question uh, last Monday. Was it Monday or? Yeah, Monday when we had a, an interview. But I think, yeah, you asked it. So, ako naman, yung position ko, it's the same, no? It's um, baseless. Uh, you know, it's sad that it had to be mentioned, but you know, if kutiting na yun naman po yung nagawa at performance ng ating presidente, um, yun ang magpapatunay na yung mga binanggit ni Mayor Baste na lack of compassion, lack of direction, lack of love, uh, I think uh, uh, has no uh, value in it given uh, the performance of. Uh, President Bongbong Marcos. In fact, um, for the House, we even reiterated our support for him 
last Monday through the resolution that was um, read out by uh, Senior Deputy Speaker Don Gonzalez. On my part, uh, I answered that also during Monday uh, press conference, yung uh, sinabi ni Mayor Baste. So, ang masasabi ko lang po, ang pinagbili ni Speaker, na we will work as a team para sa ating mga kababayan. Uh, okay, okay. okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 Ano paano hindi ko nga maintindihan ang statement nila gusto nila humawalay kasi wala according the last time we check according to DBM yung isang distrito nga 51 billion pesos ano nga iwalay dahil nakakuha na ng 51 billion pesos at yung mga ibang distrito na pabayaan nyo at uh, hindi nyo naalagaan tapos iniisip nyo sarili nyo lang eh ba bakit naman ganun no So why why I, I don't I don't see right now we're good and I don't see any benefit for this country for Mindanao to separate tapos pagtitingnan mo ng buo hindi maganda sa ekonomiya na hihiwala yung Mindanao may iwan eh so kela I I still believe that we have it it is of more benefit that Mindanao be part of this republic. Pag humiwalay siya, madidihado pa. Eh, ba, okay lang siguro yung mga nakakuha na ng 51 billion pesos na sa, par, pa, sa kanilang distrito, sa kanilang siyudad. Eh, paano naman yung mga wala pa? Ihiwalay nyo na. So, I, I disagree with them. Good afternoon. Tinitingnan ko yung seal ng house. Tanggalan ng istang, isang star yun, dalawa na lang. Soon Visayas, Mindanao yan. Magtanggalan mo, dalawa na, pangit-pangit. Going back to history. Alam niyo po, yung Mindanao Independence Movement, nangyari po yan sa Cagayan de Oro. Buhay pa po ako, namatay na yung tatay ko. In fact, mayroon po akong passport noon. And it was started by a former mayor, I think, member of the Bata, Itirim Batasang Pambansa, na ilulons na yun para for his presidency. Pero hindi talaga nakatake off. Oo. Uh, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was the late uh, mayor of Cagayan de Oro, uh, Ruben Canoy. And kinausap din yan tatay ko dyan. My late father was a congressman then uh, about his plans of being a president. Uh, that was his uh, slogan, Mindanao Independence Movement. Pero hindi naka-take off po yun. As I said, may dollar pa sila, mayroon pa silang passport na gagawin yun. Pero doon pa lang, it was just only a slogan for him for running probably for the presidency or senate. Eh, wala nang iba. Pero uh, kung sasabihin mo bihig or talo sa releases, I don't think so. I don't think so now, uh, Mindanao, lalo na ngayon. No? And uh, probably it's another propaganda na lang na dapat ginawa na nila sa previous administration. Bakit ngayon? Amen. So, uh, as a Mindanaoan, no? my province sa Lone District o Kamigin, uh, hindi pa payag doon. Kasi kung talagang totohanin nila, 
Ang kamigin po, babalik na lang sa Visayas. Gusto ko nandun pa sa star ang kamigin. Thank you. Malayo <laughs> yun. Uh, kung Ace, going back to history, ang kamigin po, pumasok yung mga katsila. Yung, yung simbahan po ng kamigin, kasama po sa Visayas, when ginawa yung Misamis Oriental or Misamis and Cagayan de Oro, kinuha yung kamigin as part of Mindanao. But originally, kamigin was part of Visayas. Thank you. Ako naman, I was asked earlier about that, yung secession na uh, move no, and proposal. Ang aking uh, sagot ay uh, simple lang. No? Uh, ito ay dapat pinag-aaralan. No? Ito ay hindi dapat, uh, kasi marami pong, unang-una, marami pong proseso ang gagawin dito. Ang usapan, eh, pirma lang. When you create another, uh, you remove Mindanao from the Republic of the Philippines, that would probably entail a revision of the Constitution. Uh, isn't that correct? <laughs> so ngayon, dahil pirma lang naman tayo, no, so wala naman political provisions at the moment, sa tingin ko, no, uh, they probably have, uh, the proponents probably have uh, some idea on why they are pushing for this. No? Let, uh, personally, my opinion is that uh, I don't want to shoot it down right away because pag-aralan, tingnan natin, di ba? Uh, if this will redound to more benefits for the people, bakit naman hindi? But as it is today, eh medyo sa tingin ko malabo pa. Malabo pa yan. At uh, because malabo pa yan, at hindi yan ang ating priority, abay, dapat siguro pag-usapan natin muna yung eh, more important uh, matters at hand. Okay, I am from, uh, again, Yoro, Mindanao, Republic of the Philippines. So, uh, uh, the, the statement of the president, former president, and former speaker of the House, uh, well, the president, former president, was six years president in our country. There was no call for an independent Mindanao. Speaker Alvarez was but three years speaker of the House. Uh, there was no call from him on... Uh, seceding uh, Mindanao from the Philippines. So now, they're, they're not uh, the president anymore or the speaker, and then they don't want to give a chance to President Marcos. Under back on Pilipinas, he's only one and a half years. And one and a half uh, years, correct, uh, of, his, of his term. No? So we, we have to give a chance to the president, and therefore, uh, any statement about uh, you know seceding independent independence just uh, tries to really you know bring up you know stoke the fire because uh, it is also true that uh, Mindanao does not also really get uh, a big part uh, of uh, the budget. But ever since uh, Ruben Cano, my uh, my uh, mayor of Cagayan de Oro, uh, put this up. There has been presidents have been trying to be able to increase more budget, but not as what we would like uh, this to be done. So that, that means that uh, we do not want independence, but we want additional budget for the land of promise. Malayo kami. We are far from the uh, centers of power and governance. And that is why now, with President Duterte and uh, Speaker Alvarez saying that, I tell you, uh, uh, many who have also felt the poverty in Mindanao has some uh, sympathy for this. But I am saying that let's give a chance to this administration with President Bombo Marcos, who is inclusive, including Mindanao, to be able to provide, uh, to give, fulfill the promise of Mindanao. And I am confident that with the president, we will be able to increase uh, more budget, uh, especially we're going to the budget process for uh, next uh, this coming August, 
to uh, precisely to stop this kind of you know trying to you know um, have a heated to you make our people you know go on this and think about it uh, to be able through progress through development stop all this kind of uh, proposals because we we want to be strong united Philippines uh, thank you. Um, uh, I, uh, there's not, nothing has been filed. So uh, I think at this point in time, there's nothing to challenge. It's premature for the former president to file anything. What is happening now is that there are signature gathering upon explanation to the people why we need this for change. And so uh, it becomes, there's no justiciable question. That is the word that would bring a matter to the courts, no? What is a justiciable question? On controversy, a present controversy. Iyong po papirma, yung pag-sign ng mga tao, that is the right, a right to sign. Now, wala pang petition. Pag-file ng petition, premature pa rin because the petition is not, it's, it's not sure it will be approved by the COMELEC on sufficiency of the petition. So it cannot be filed. So when there can there possibly be a filing, when the, uh, the, the, the COMELEC will state that there is sufficiency of the petition, and when they declare that, they declare within 60 to 90 days the plebiscite. And then probably they will go to court and state, uh, go against the executive secretary uh, to be able to stop the plebiscite, but at this time, well, I, all the cases against these political exercises are uh, uh, goes into when it is approved by the proper body, uh, the COMELEC. And so therefore, we're saying that uh, premature, let's wait, uh, there are signatures that have been signed, it will be filed, they will have to have a hearing and validation of this, and then, uh, then uh, probably uh, later they can, they can also file. I am sure any petition now will be dismissed by any court, and thank you. Um, I, well, uh, looking naman at the, the statement, you know, um, with uh, due respect to the Senate, um, sometimes strong statements require strong answers. You know? So, hindi naman nakakasakit. Strong, yes, but uh, that only shows um, the, the how serious we take it. 